If you ask an average American what holiday makes him happy, then the most likely answer will be Christmas. Russians will also answer this question without any hesitation. Of course, it's New Year. But the happiest day of the year does not always mean the most important day of the year. The most important day for us is May 9th, celebrated in Russia as Victory Day. Frankly, this is a hard topic. Recording this video is quite difficult for me personally, but I would like to tell you why this day is a sacred day for my country. So why exactly is this day so important for every single Russian? To be honest, you won't even get a definite answer here. Everyone has his own. To some, this is a day of remembrance of a great country of the USSR. Others celebrate it as a day of victory over the worst enemy possible. To some, it's a day when you can show off your military power. And for someone, it's a day of sorrow and commemoration. And the main value of this holiday lies precisely in the fact that on this day people forget about their political, religious and personal disagreements and just remember their history. As you probably know, Europe is celebrating the end of World War II on May 8th, not 9th. German troops surrendered at 11 pm on May 8th. By the time, it was already May 9th in Moscow, and that is why this day became Victory Day for the USSR. In addition, on May 9th, Joseph Stalin addressed the people on the radio with a statement that the war was over, and at 10 pm, huge fireworks were launched in the sky over Moscow. So what other countries celebrate May 9th? First of all, one cannot help but recall the former Soviet republics. In no case do not think that I want to somehow downplay their role in this day. All the peoples of the former USSR contributed to this victory. Therefore, in most former USSR countries, this date is a holiday. May 9th is a public holiday in all of the former USSR countries, except for the Baltic countries and Ukraine. Ukraine celebrated the holiday until 2015, after which it began to celebrate Victory Day over Nazism in World War II instead of Victory Day as a part of the law on decommunization. It is distinguished by the absence of Soviet symbols and the rejection of the use of the term Great Patriotic War, which is common in Russia. The Baltic countries refused to celebrate this day, citing the fact that the Soviet Union occupied them in 1944. However, the Russian community of these countries still informally celebrate the holiday. Among other countries celebrated May 9th, we can mention Israel, where this day is an official nation holiday day of commemoration. Informal and semi-official celebrations are also held in Germany, Poland, Serbia, Romania and Bulgaria. Each holiday is celebrated differently, and each holiday has its own symbols and traditions. Some of them are personal to each human being, and it is difficult to explain them to a foreigner. But Victory Day has five main common symbols and traditions, and let's begin with the moment of their chronological appearance. Of course, it was the banner that came first. It appeared even before the final victory, on May 1st, when it was raised above the Reichstag by two Soviet soldiers, a Russian and a Georgian. Many people know that the victory banner is the flag of the 150th Rifle Division. Each of the nine divisions of the 3rd Shock Army, which was the first in the center of Berlin, made one banner in April 1945, especially for this occasion. But not many people know that this flag was not the first red flag to find itself on the roof of the Reichstag. The first to set up their homemade flag was Red Army soldier Grigory Bulatov on April 30th. He was a part of a group led by Lieutenant Semyon Sorokin. However, their flag was a simple red mattress cover found in the rubble of a Berlin house, and during the night the flag was destroyed by shelling, so it never became the banner of victory. After the war, the Victory Banner was transferred to eternal storage at the Museum of the Armed Forces in Moscow. This banner was taken out of the museum only several times. For example, it participated in 1965 parade. Currently, the banner is stored in the underground of the museum, and the exact copy is exhibited in the museum itself. On Victory Day, copies of the Victory Banner can be raised on buildings along with the state flag of the Russian Federation 
and every single victory parade on Red Square in Moscow is opened with the rise of the official copy of the victory banner. Contrary to popular belief, the first parade on the occasion of the victory was not held on May 9th, 1945, but on June 24th, 1945. And by the way, the original Victory Banner did not participate in it, although according to the initial plan, its display should have opened the parade. Two hero marshals, Zhukov and Rokossovsky, took a vital part in it. First one was the parade inspector and the other one was the parade commander. But what about Stalin, you ask? Another interesting story. According to the memoirs of Vasily Stalin, his father wanted to command the parade. But to do this, it was necessary to ride through a red square on a horse, like Zhukov and Rokossovsky did. Stalin urgently tried to learn how to do this, but during the very first training session he fell from the horse. Naturally, the leader had to abandon such an active role. Strangely enough, for approximately 20 years after the war, this day was practically not celebrated at the state level. Moreover, parades on the occasion of the anniversary of the victory in the USSR took place only three times, in 1965, 1985 and 1990. Since 1995 this tradition has become an annual one. But let's go back in the days of the USSR. Why was this day not celebrated and was an ordinary working day? There are several reasons for this. The first is the unwillingness of the authorities to remind people once again about the terrible and destructive war in which up to 30 million of their fellow citizens died. The second reason is less obvious. May the 1st, International Workers' Day or Labor Day, the day of large-scale celebrations and processions in the USSR. Two holidays so close to each other, it is just too much for the hardworking Soviet society. There is, of course, a third version. After the war, Marshal Zhukov and Rakasovsky were very, very popular with the ordinary people. Joseph Stalin simply did not want to give the people an occasion to once again recall their heroes, because the USSR should have only one true hero. In modern Russia, with each parade, veterans play a smaller role, and more attention is paid to the amount of modern military equipment. The first is easily explainable. It is difficult for older people to actively participate in parades, and gradually all the remaining veterans moved from the procession to the stands. The second is perceived by many as a not entirely appropriate demonstration of the country's military power. However, the parade remains the most important attribute of the holiday, with parades being held not only in Moscow, but also in many large cities of Russia and the CIS countries. Naturally, such a day is marked not only by the passage of the military across the squares. Other traditions include laying wreaths and flowers at the National War Memorials. Members of the government usually take part in the wreath laying ceremony at the tomb of the unknown soldier in Moscow, while ordinary people bring flowers to the eternal flames in their cities or to other major war monuments. Exactly at 6.55 pm Moscow time, a special television program, The Minute of Silence, begins on all TV channels of Russia. Aside from a minute of silence itself, the main part of the program was a solemn address, known in Russia as Minuta Malchania, dedicated to all those who fell fighting the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union. If you talk about modern traditions, the first thing that comes to mind is the wearing of a St. George ribbon. St. George's ribbons are the most recognizable symbol of remembrance in Russia and are as closely associated with Victory Day as poppies with Armistice Day in Britain and the US. For the first time ribbons appeared as a symbol of victory in 2005. St. George ribbon was a part of a highest army award, the Order of St. George, since 18th century. In terms of colors, it repeats the Guards ribbon on the Orders of Glory and medals for the victory over Germany in the 1941-1945 Great Patriotic War. Currently, it is used as one of the symbols of remembrance, however, perhaps this is the most controversial symbol of them all. First of all, in the USSR there were no St. George ribbons and could not be St. George. It is definitely not about the USSR. 
Secondly, the ribbon actually repeats part of the official award, and in Imperial Russia the ribbon was sometimes used as an analog of the Order of Saint George, in cases where the chevalier for some reasons could not wear the order itself. In 1914 the Saint George ribbon was officially awarded to the General Alexander Sergeyevich Lukomsky as an independent award. Therefore, many people, myself included, believe that they simply do not have the right to wear such a badge. Thirdly, the image of the ribbon in modern Russia is used literally everywhere, including the sale of some products on the eve of the victory day. And this is not to mention the fact that one of the sides of the Ukrainian conflict in 2014 decided to use the St. George ribbon as their own symbol. In general, the introduction of this ribbon was a good idea, but not all residents of Russia consider its implementation successful. Talking about successful, the immortal regiment. If the St. George ribbon is a common but rather artificial symbol of victory, then the immortal regiment processions turned out to be as organic and successful as possible. The idea was rather simple, since veterans cannot participate in the processions on the occasion of Victory Day, their descendants will do it with them and for them. Participants carry pictures of relatives and or family members who served during the Second World War. This is the newest of all the symbols of victory. For the first time this idea in a modern embodiment appeared in Tomsk in 2012. The first rally was attended by more than 6,000 people who carried more than 2,000 portraits of war veterans. After three years, the Immortal Regiment was held in 1,150 cities in 17 countries of the world. In all of the years, this procession was held in more than 80 countries. This year it will be held online, but even a coronavirus pandemic will not interfere with its implementation. So why is this holiday so important for modern Russia? In answering this question, it is worthwhile to clearly separate two things, personal and public. Let's start with the public. Victory Day is the day that unites Russia. For a country that has completely changed its history and direction three times over the past 100 years, this holiday was most necessary. The memory of the Great Patriotic War became a rare point of public consensus. The unity of the people is now so important for the Russian government that they even recreated the day of national unity, an artificial holiday scheduled for November 4th. Although the real day of unity, here it is on May 9th, and it is worth celebrating it as a day of remembrance and unification, and not as a day of demonstrating military power. Now about a personal reason. Victory Day is an intensively personal day for citizens of Russia and many of the former Soviet republics, whose collective casualties during World War II exceeds 28 million. Each family was affected by the war. Everyone lost his loved ones in the war. We can really be proud of this victory, perhaps the main event of the bloody, tragic and very ambiguous Soviet history. Moreover, it is the ordinary person who becomes the object of pride, and not the mighty Soviet Union, not the government, but a simple soldier. Each one of those who have returned from the battlefront and those who stayed there forever. On this day, every Russian family remembers those who are no longer with us. In our family, this is a day of remembrance of my grandfathers. Both went to the battlefront when they turned 18 and went through the war until the final end. On this day, we remember them, thank them and rejoice that they have returned home. Although the chances of it were very, very slim. Suffice it to say that one of my grandfather graduated from school in 1941. His graduation day fell on the June 21st, exactly the day before Germany attacked the USSR. Of all of the guys in his class, he is the only one who have returned from the war, and the only one of his brothers. And in every family there is such a story, in every Russian city. Hopefully, these stories will not be forgotten.